If I didn't have my sister who used to swim 24 seven, I don't think I would have had the aspiration to even know that it's possible. So yeah, I'm very grateful to her actually. One of the things that was said quite a lot when I was a child is that black people have heavy bones. You know kids, you know these things go around the school and people make fun and it was always that like black people have heavy bones, black people have big bones and they can't float so therefore they can't swim and it would always be said like look at all the top swimmers, they're not black. Like, it was always like you guys run, you know, you guys lift, you can do other things but you can't swim and that narrative it, it, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It just went through and through and through and through. But then, unless you see black people swimming, you subconsciously believe it. So I think part of that reclamation is like obviously understanding biologically <laughs> that it isn't true and like just reclaiming the space of the water. My name's LaDonia and I'm from Bristol. I've been learning to swim for four and a half months now. I started because I just really love movement and I also enjoy water, um, but I'd been scared of learning to swim, scared of putting my head underwater. So when I found the sessions with Open Mind Active, I was nervous, but because there were specific sessions for women of colour, I felt actually like I was, it was going to be quite a supportive environment. And then when it was my first session, I remember feeling quite relaxed even from getting in the water. So just like, even just like having my body in, it was like a big... <sighs> when, um, when Wafa, the teacher, was teaching me, she was very supportive, she was very encouraging. I said to her, I feel like you're like my mum on the side. Cause uh, she was really, she was just very supportive. And we just did little by little, all the other ladies were very lovely. Um, I didn't feel out of place. I didn't feel uncomfortable. And it's just kind of gone on from there. And I think from not ever swimming to then being able to put my head underwater to then learning to breathe underwater, I think those have been like the biggest things because I never imagined that I would do that. It just wasn't a part of my life. I think the barriers have been a fear of not fitting in. Also, I've got very long, thick hair. So before, you know, when I was growing up in the 90s, there, there weren't big swim caps. So it would be really embarrassing trying to get it on. My granddad would go to the sea every single day until probably his 80s. And actually, there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to do that. These stereotypes, this discrimination that my community has faced in the UK, it's exactly that, it's stereotypes and it's not, it's not real. I think going against that, even though it can be difficult sometimes, is a really big, a really big part of it. It makes me feel like I can access all spaces now because I'm a very, I like movement, I like activity. I, I felt able to enter a gym, to enter a yoga studio, to enter a dance studio, but I didn't feel comfortable to enter a pool. And so that was like a, a space that was just inaccessible for me. But now that I feel like I can, and now trying outdoor swimming for the first time, I'll be able to access spaces like this and the beach is a big one because I love the beach but I'm always slightly nervous and I just kind of paddle around so it'll be really nice to actually go to the beach and feel confident and feel safe and feel comfortable and, and enjoy.